Hi everyone and welcome to the English 300 Children's Literature Library Instruction Session. Um, my name is Andrea Putnam and I am a librarian here at Charles Chestnut Library. Um, my telephone number is 910-672-1242. I am here for all of your reference questions. If you need any help um, at any point after this session, any point in your studies here at FSU with your research, databases, any kind of information that you should need here at the library, that's what I'm here for. I've also provided my email address, which is amputnam at uncfsu.edu. We also have a reference desk, so for whatever reason you can't get a hold of me, please do call the reference desk and speak with another librarian for assistance. And the telephone number for the reference desk is 910-672-1233. So anytime the library is open, you can get assistance from somebody at the reference desk. Um, another thing I wanted to mention too is that the library, our number one job here is to help you succeed and excel here in your studies here at FSU. Um, our role is to help you and to be that person who helps with your research, finding relevant articles, and ensuring that you have credible sources to use so that you can succeed here. Um, in this, in this tutorial, tutorial today, we'll be looking at finding resources at Charles Chestnut Library, books, periodicals, and websites. And um, another thing I want to mention is you will get a copy of these PowerPoint slides. So um, I believe they'll be posted in Blackboard by Dr. Weatherford. If not, um, they will be emailed to you. So you'll always have a copy of these PowerPoint slides. Another thing I wanted to point out is normally I actually deliver the, the, these PowerPoints to in-class face-to-face sessions. So the material that you're gonna see today is identical to what I would present to you should you be on campus. Um, Okay, our class objectives today, we are going to learn how to navigate the Charles Chestnut Library webpage. We'll also learn how to access and search the FSU's online catalog to identify children's and young adults' books and non-print materials. We'll also learn how to identify literature and education databases to find journal articles online. We'll also learn how to locate books, journal, and non-print materials at Charles Chestnut Library as well as locating citation resources and manuals. Um, just a little bit about Charles Chestnut Library. Um, not only are we a traditional library, but we're also available 24-7. So what that means to you as online students is that you, can, you don't need to physically be at the library in order to do your research and access full text journal articles, ebooks, and a ton of other information. Um, as long as you have a computer and internet access, you can do your research remotely from home 24 hours a day. Charles Chestnut Library has over 300,000 book titles, 2,600 current periodical titles, over 410 electronic journal titles, and access to over 11,700 full-text electronic journal titles through NC Live, as well as over 300 full text article, biographical, statistical, and information databases. Now for those, I realize that this is an online course and maybe maybe most of you, all of your courses are online. However, if you are able to come to campus, you definitely can come to the library and physically use um, the entire library, including the um, including the computer lab. Um, we also have laptops that you can borrow in the library. If you have um, two pieces of identification, your Bronco ID card and another piece of photo ID. Um, and our reference desk is located on the first floor of the library. It's staffed by professional librarians with their master's in library information science degree, such as myself. We provide assistance using reference materials, the online catalog, electronic databases and basic internet searching to find books, journal articles, and relevant websites. We currently have over 70 computers um, with full Microsoft Office suite and internet capabilities. Now our spring 2013 hours are Monday to Thursday from 7.45 a.m. until midnight from 
on Friday from 7.45 a.m. until 6 p.m., Saturday from 7.45 a.m. until 5 p.m., and Sunday from 2 p.m. until 11 p.m. Okay, so there's two ways that you can go to the library's homepage. The first of which, there's actually a direct link on the FSU website. So if you just go to um, www.uncfsu.edu, there's actually a link on the left-hand side for library. And if you click on that link, it will take you directly to the library's homepage. Um, and of course, the other option is, is typing in the address library.uncfsu.edu. And once you are on um, our homepage, this is actually what our homepage looks like. And we recently kind of changed the look and feel of it. And there's actually a few new features that I wanted to point out to you as well. Um, some of the standard information is still there. So there's information on the left hand side about the library, home services, newspapers, research tools, contact information. Um, we also have the online catalog. So that is what I'm going to show you in a moment. And the online catalog allows you to look for books. Um, we also have ebooks, um, media material, um, and that sort of information. Our articles and databases link right below that. Um, that's another very important link and something we're going to be looking at today as well. And this is the way that you search for when you don't know the name of the journal or publication or specific date information, you can search a database and find relevant full text, scholarly, popular, biographical, any type of article of that nature in our articles and databases link. Um, we also have something called Journal Finder. So we're going to be looking at that a little bit later as well. Um, journal Finder is great when you know the name of the journal that you want to search. So for instance, if you were looking for the school library journal or book list or Horn book review, um, you could definitely look at all the issues of those publications in Journal Finder. Um, we also have Digital Commons, the course reserves, interlibrary loan, and um, I'll discuss that in a little bit as well, and my library record. Um, we also have a lot of social media and 2.0 um, affiliated technology now. So we have the Charles Chestnut Library blog. We also have a Facebook and a Twitter account, and you can follow all the wonderful activity going on in that as well. Something that we just got about two weeks ago is the reference chat. And you'll notice here on the right hand side of the page, there is a box that says Ask FSU. And this is actually a way that you can talk live with a librarian and get research, information, help, any kind of assistance that you need in relation to your research, the library or services that we have, even just general information about campus questions that you need answered. We will be here to assist you. And this is always available during operated, operating hours. Um, beneath that, there is another instructional video and just an overview of our website and um, some of the key features and some of the information we're already discussing in this tutorial, but you can also look at this video again. And then right above the chat box, there's something called EBSCOhost Discovery Services. Now this is, um, this is a search box where you can search for for information on a topic and search multiple EBSCOhost databases simultaneously. So this is kind of like an excellent starting point for students when you don't know where to search and you just, you know, you want to stay away from Google because it's not scholarly, it's not peer reviewed, and obviously that's something that um, isn't academic in nature. So this is this um, EBSCOhost search box and searching databases is something you can you can definitely look at as a starting point. Okay, so one of the first things that I wanted to show you are just some search strategies and research strategies to, um, to use um, before we get into looking at the catalog and our databases. The first thing that I wanted to briefly show you is something called Boolean operators. This is a search strategy and terminology that librarians use, researchers use, and actually is something that um, even Google has and multiple different search databases have. Um, Boolean operators 
allow you to either narrow or expand your search depending on what you're trying to do in your search. And Boolean operators include the words and, or, and another one is actually not, which is not located here, but that's something you can look up and learn more about as well. So for instance, if you were to use the operator or, that would essentially expand your search. So you could use um, children's literature or young adult literature. And you can see by the diagram on the right hand side that your search results would increase significantly and you would be given more results. Um, the second example is using the Boolean operator AND, which would effectively narrow your results. So you could say children's literature and bibliography, right? Because children's literature would give you a lot of results. So bibliography would narrow that down significantly and kind of windle how many results you have. And you'll see that it's located in the blue that there's a lot less now. So um, it just helps you narrow down that topic. And finally, you can combine and and or. So in the case that you're looking for bibliographies in the area of children's literature or young adult literature, you can incorporate both those Boolean operators. Um, if anyone has any questions about this, definitely follow up with me. Um, you can even look up information on Boolean operators yourself and you'll find tons of information um, or contact here, us here at the library. Um, the next thing I wanted to show you is Library of Congress subject headings that I've compiled that relate to children's literature. So these are official controlled vocabulary search, not search strategies, but search terms that you can use, um, such as book clubs, children's literature, obviously, um, children's literature book reviews, literacy, Newbery Medal. So you can see how all of these kind of intersect with the topic of children's literature and that general field of study. Okay, so now we're going to look at the library catalog. And the FSU's online catalog um, allows you to look for books, even ebooks, electronic books, um, government documents, archives, um, and audiovisual materials such as DVDs, CDs, VHS. And you would simply click on online catalog on the main library homepage. And on the following screen, um, this is just a basic search screen. And you'll see that. Um, you can search for information by keyword, title, subject, or author. And there's actually a drop down menu here allowing you to kind of conduct your search the way you'd like. There's also a search box located in the middle of the screen. So you can search for children's literature, for Newbery Medal, for information that you're looking for. And then you can search in Fayetteville State. You also have the option of searching for books in the consortium. So that means that if there is a book that we do not have here, you can search in Wilmington and Pembroke. And you can actually place a hold on that book and it will arrive here within two or three business days. So you're not limited just to FSU. You can actually order books from Wilmington and Pembroke. Um, that's a great service and I highly recommend it. Um, Okay, so here I decided to look for keyword children's literature at Fayetteville State University right here at Charles Chestnut Library. Um, your results are listed in relevancy ranking and here you'll see that there are 978 titles that were found related to the keyword children's literature. Um, just a really brief overview of what you're seeing here. Um, usually Sometimes you're given, especially with the newer books, you're given a screenshot of the book cover. You're also given um, the title information, author data, publisher, publication information, publication date, the location of the book, which is very important. That lets us know where in the library it's located, and, and number one happens to be in the FSU main stacks. Call number as well, so that tells us the exact location of the book. Um, located on our shelves and the status of the book so whether or not it's available um, sometimes you may see that it's checked out to another student or on hold um, you want to be mindful of the status of that book before you decide to use it in your research um, so you simply um, click on the you can click on the title of that book 
and on the following screen you're you're given additional information so here you'll see that there is oftentimes content information sometimes you're given a summary of that book a very brief summary but um, or a publisher description you're also given additional subject headings uh, similar to what we looked at with the Library of Congress subject headings list so here um, it tells us that this book is about the language arts, reading, English language, and this can give you additional leads as a student and as a researcher on how you may want to look for other books or either expand or narrow your search according to these new subject headings that you've been given. Um, another feature that we have, you can actually send the call number of this book to your phone as a text message. So you don't even need to write this number down, you just send it to your phone and then once um, you have it on your phone, you can just find it on the shelf. Another thing that I wanted to mention, I realize that you're all online students, and I think some of you actually are have some classes on campus, and you're able to come to the library, but for those who may be on the other side of the state or in a totally different state, and if you're a 100% online student, um, you do have the option of document delivery, where we will deliver any books you see in our catalog to your home and again you have to be 100 percent online student so if you're taking five courses online you will qualify if you're taking one course online one of one you will qualify however if you're only taking one course online and let's say three courses on campus that wouldn't be considered online but um that's just another great service and way that we like to give the same level of help and resources and service to our online students that's equitable to our on-campus students. Okay, now let's go back to our original results page. I just wanted to point out something that you can look for as well when you conduct your library search and that is if you notice here on the left hand side there is actually anytime you see ebook with a red E on top of it that means that this is an electronic book and essentially an ebook from our catalog that you can view 100% online from home and again this is a free service available 24-7 to FSU students. And what you do is you just click on the hyperlink for that title of the ebook that you want to look at. And on the following page, um, simply select FSU View This Ebook for Full Text Access. And note that if you are off campus, you will be prompted to enter your FSU username and PIN. So um, you can enter in your username and your PIN and then you will have access to the entire ebook. And here you'll see this is kind of an example of one of the ebooks called the Kipling's Children's Literature Language Identity and Constructions of Childhood. And um, you can look at all 187 pages and you ha can go chapter by chapter. Um, in order to flip the pages, there's arrows right here. Um, right at the top on the upper left hand side. You can flip the arrow to go forward or go backward. Another great feature that I love about ebooks is you can actually search within the ebooks for um, keywords or content or relevant subject information um, in order to find that information in the ebook. And you don't have that advantage with print books, so that's kind of a great thing that I really appreciate. Okay. Okay, so going back to the search screen, um, that was an electronic book and we have thousands of other electronic books. So you're not limited to just that one book, there's tons of electronic books. Um, you can also narrow the initial search that we used. So for instance, we initially decided to search for children's literature, but here I decided I want to narrow that and use um, the Boolean operator AND, and I'm going to look for children's literature and African American. So here, um, and then I'll just click on search and that will take me to the following screen. Okay, so now I only have my results limited to children's literature and African American. And you can see that the results are a lot different and it's narrowed it significantly to that exact search area that I wanted to search for. Um, okay, and let's go back to 
our initial search screen. And here, um, I'm actually going to look for information in the library catalog according to subject. So here, I'll use the subject of children's literature, and I'm going to change the drop-down area. I changed that to subject. Um, what I'm trying to illustrate with all these different types of searches is just how how many different types of searches that you can do in our library catalog and just how flexible it is and how easy it is and just how um, different search strategies render different results as well. So here I'm looking for children's literature subject in the subject area. And you'll notice here in the following page it tells us that there are um, 58 entries found with the exact subject heading of children's literature. And then you can just click on the hyperlink for children's literature and it will take you to all 58 results for that. And you may even be able to find some electronic books, um, journals, and other related books and other information on that. Okay, and finally, another thing, well not finally, but another thing I wanted to show you in the catalog is by using the keyword, you're not limited to just children's literature. I know that you have um, some assignments dealing with um, awards and reviews and that sort of thing. So I just wanted to illustrate using the keyword Caldecott. You can find, and then clicking on submit or search. Um, now we have 88 books related to Caldecott or the Caldecott Award. So again, some great um, resources that you have here at Charles Chestnut Library. Um, okay, so now we've kind of gone through the library catalog portion of this tutorial. Um, what I wanted to show you now um, before we go, go on to databases and finding articles is the Library of Congress call number arrangement. So this is essentially the way that the books are classified in the library once you find the, the call number and location of the book. So our reference books are located on the first floor of the library. They do not circulate, um, but you can use them in the library and make photocopies as needed. Um, our FSU main stack books, including juvenile and oversized books, are located on the second and third floor of the library, and they can be checked out. Call numbers A to K are on the second floor, and call numbers L to Z are on the third floor, as well as oversized and kids or, or children's juvenile material. We also have a media center located on the second floor where we have DVDs, CDs, and cassettes, as well as a viewing center so you can view any of those CDs, cassettes, and um, DVDs. We actually still have VHS capabilities, so if you have a VHS uh, or VHS tapes and you don't have a video machine, we still have those here and you can use them. Um, and then we have government documents archives located on the fourth floor of the library. Those materials do not circulate, but we do have a government documents librarian as well as an archivist who can help you with any information that you need. Um, and here at the bottom of this page, you'll see that I've just kind of given you um, just an example of how books might look on the shelves with their spine label. So you'll see that um, it starts with P. This example is from P and it ranges to PZ. So this just shows you how it um, we categorize it according to the Library of Congress and it's alphabetical. And then from there it becomes numeric. So I'll go P and then onwards. Okay, so the next portion of this video tutorial that I wanted to show you today is our articles and databases component. And in order to access our articles and databases, you would simply go back to the main library homepage at library.umcfsu.edu and click on the articles and databases link on the left hand side of the page. And again, this is the way that you will locate full text scholarly or popular journals, magazines, um, newspaper articles, and any information related to what you're looking for. Um, on the following screen, you have a number of options. You can search for databases by subject, so many times you don't necessarily know which database you want to look in. Um, databases allow us to find information based on keywords or subjects, and you don't need the journal information or even journal title to find that. So here you can search for databases by subject. 
You also have the option of looking for databases alphabetically. So if you already know the name of the database, and I imagine you will know the name of several databases after this tutorial, um, you can also search for databases by title or keyword. So here in the drop-down menu, when you look for databases by subject, you can select literature, um, you can also select English. If you're in a different discipline, in a different course on campus, you can choose that as well. So here I decided to look for information related to literature. And these are the databases, there are 64 in total. And you'll see that they're listed alphabetically and you have the hyperlink for that database title as well as a brief summary of what each database has and is capable of. You'll notice that some of them have you know, complete literary works, poems, whereas others are um, articles, biographical information. If you're studying business, we also have business information, um, statistical data, and it, songs. It just it goes on and on. Um, and this is just another page of that information that we have. Um, so one of the databases that I wanted to show you um, is called Abel and that's the Annual Bibliography of English Literature, English Language and Literature, and you would simply click on a bell from the literature drop menu that we just saw right there. Another database and a great starting point for you guys is called Literary Reference Center, and this is, um, this is an EBSCOhost database, but the name of it obviously is Literary Reference Center and you can search for information in the search box here and then we also you can search by um, publication date and there's other limiters you can use. Um, the third database that I would suggest that you can look at and I'm going to go deeper into um, an actual hands-on search I just wanted to give you a few examples of where you can start your search um, is called Literature Online and otherwise known as LION, L-I-O-N, and um, they have information about authors, text, literary criticisms, reference, complete contexts, uh, contents, um, full text journals, author index, even multimedia. So you could search there as well. Something that I forgot to point out is if you are off campus, um, in order to access these databases similar to your ebooks, that you can locate. Um, you will need to enter your username and password, which is the exact same username and, and password that you use for Blackboard as well as your Bronco email account. Okay, so going back to the Literature Resource Center, or not Literature Resource Center, but this is the first time we're looking at Literature Resource Center, and this is the fourth database I wanted to show you. And again, this is from the original menu that you saw for articles and databases and then under literature you'll find the literature resource center or you can search for it alphabetically and here you can search for information um, you can do a basic search so you can look for picture books um, by keyword um, publication dates you can also search the publication century or content type so you can look for bibliographies literary criticisms and there's just an extensive list of options that you can use so in this example search, I decided to look for, as you remember, picture books. And then once you click on go, you're brought to the following screen. And here I didn't really limit to anything further than that. I just did a general basic search. And um, in this page, you'll see that there's quite a bit of information here, but the tabs on the, on the upper portion of this page let us know um, just kind of a breakdown of what your results are. So here there's 472 literary criticisms, there's 314 biographies, topic and work overviews, reviews and news, primary sources and literary works, which is an excellent component of this database, as well as multimedia. So I mean, you this is obviously an opportunity where you can even narrow your search further. So you can say picture books and you can even narrow by author or theme within the book and they even give you examples on the left hand side of the page which is another reason I love this database so much um, social criticisms masculinity um, and then just different options for various authors 
Another database that we have here at Charles Chestnut Library is called Novelist Plus, and this can be accessed the same way that you found the previous databases we looked at. So if you go back to the main library homepage, click on Articles and Databases, and then select N for Novelist Plus, or you can look by keyword or title. Um, once you are on this page, um, there are several different options here. Um, you can search for children's books by author, title, series, and um, contained within Novelist, this is actually like a reader's advisory database that librarians can use, teachers use, but also for your purposes in this class where you can find um, reviews related to different books or series. Um, and you can also see here that you can look for um, books by um, the genre, so um, adventure fiction, graphic novels, horror, mystery. Um, we, you can also look by, you can look for information by um, the demographic range, so you can even select ages 9 to 12 or ages 0 to 8. Um, also, this includes nonfiction titles, so it's a very excellent database for the purposes of this class. You'll also notice on the right hand side you can browse award winners. So this is another thing that you could use for the different assignments that you have in this class. Um, so if you were to select um, award winners, um, on the following page it lists awards, notable books, um, you can search by award name or genre, and here you can see that we're looking in the search box for Caldecott. And um, once you click on search, um, you're, you see all the Caldecott medals. And this is um, the current, if you were to look at it right now in real time, it will show the 2000, up to 2012 award winners. Okay, so this is Novelist Plus. Okay, so now something that we're going to look at is called Journal Finder. So if you go back to the main library homepage and then on the left hand side right underneath Articles and Databases there is a link for Journal Finder. And simply click on that and once you have you will go to the following screen that you see right here. And what Journal Finder is, it, is it allows you to locate journal titles owned by our library or available online. So this isn't just bound print journals in our library, these are actually electronic journals that you can view at home anywhere you have internet access. And as an FSU student, of course, this is a free service available to you. Um, I know in this class there are several different journals that you'll be looking at, um, library school journal, um, and a variety of others. So for instance, if we decided to look for Hornbook, simply click or um, type in Hornbook or the, the journal that you want to view within the search bar. And then on the following screen you'll see that um, you can find a Hornbook Guide to Children's and Young Adult Books as well as the Hornbook Magazine. Now um, this lets us know that you do in fact have online access. So anytime you see that computer icon that means that this is an online ebook that you can view from home and you simply click on the the computer or icon that's a clickable icon and then um, there's actually a, a previous screen before this screen and you select um, one of the options there and it brings you to a screen that looks like this where you can search this is strictly horn book journal or whichever journal you choose to search and you can search within the publication for a specific title, um, a keyword, or information related to what you're looking for. There is also a, an advanced search mechanism here, so you can search in advanced features. Um, you can also browse specific issues. So um, here you'll see that there's 2000 all the way to 2012, and it will show the oldest um, the newest issue is located first. Um, so that is Hornbook and the Journal Finder. Okay, so now we have looked at our online catalog, articles and databases, and then we just looked at Journal Finder. And the final thing that I wanted to show you within this tutorial is called LibGuides. And what LibGuides are, are an electronic subject guide that we have created in various disciplines. Um, 
and LibGuides are actually at thousands or hundreds of universities in the country and throughout the world and allow for librarians to compile a list of relevant um, databases, journal titles, books, and other information specific to the course of study. Um, and our LibGuides are located at http libguides.uncfsu.edu uh, or you can actually go to our homepage and click on research tools and then subject guides and then there is or rather research tools and LibGuides and that will take you directly to our LibGuides page. And once you are on our LibGuides page you'll see that you can search for LibGuides by subject, by librarian, or we even have feature guides here. Um, some of the most relevant ones that I wanted to point out to you include our how to cite guide. So what I've done is compiled information on the most valuable um, citation manuals we have here at the library as well as authoritative links or official websites to help you in your citation. Um, another database that I have or another ebook, not ebook, another libguide that I've created is the Young Adult Literature Libguide located right here. So I've compiled a list of different awards and relevant information to this course. I'm currently working on a children's literature libguide. I, I hope to be finished that in the next few days and hopefully post it. If not for this course, definitely for the next semester that you can even refer back to if you like. Um, Another thing is you can search all the all the guides, so you can find the, the guides that I'm discussing right now. Um, this is an example of one of the LibGuides, and this is for the Young Adult Literature LibGuide. And you'll see here that this is just like the home, the overview, with um, book review literature that I, I've pointed out. Um, a lot of this is already in your Blackboard and already in your course, but this is another kind of list to help you find that information. Um, we also, you'll notice that there's tabs here, so you'll find information about awards, print books, book reviews, professional organizations and publications, and other useful information as well as my contact information as well. Um, Okay, so that pretty much concludes the library tutorial for today, and thank you for allowing me to introduce you to all of the different amazing resources that we have for you at Charles Chestnut Library. Um, the databases that we explored in this tutorial include ABEL, the Annual Bibliography English Literature, Language and Literature database, um, the Literary Reference Center, MLA International Bibliography, as well as Novelist Plus. So definitely go back to those databases, um, go to our homepage, click on the Articles and Databases link, and you can find any of these databases we looked at today. Um, and don't forget, if you are still confused, you need any kind of assistance at all, um, my number one goal here at the university is to assist you and to ensure that you succeed in your studies. Um, becoming great researchers will help you excel not only here, but on in your graduate studies and lifelong learning as well. So um, if you can't get a hold of me for whatever reason, please do contact the reference desk at 910-672-1233. Um, there's always a li librarian here to help you during operating hours um, that were listed in one of the previous slides and also available on our homepage. And thank you again for attending. And if there's anything you need, please let me know. Thank you.